Hey, this is Brad, and today we're going to talk about knife sharpening and specifically using the WorkSharp Professional Precision Adjust Knife Sharpening System, which I have really come to love because it is incredibly simple and easy to use. Um, and anybody, I think with a little bit of practice, can really learn how to use this thing and get any knife you own incredibly sharp and sh as sharp as a professional sharpener could get it for you. Uh, so we're going to talk about grip progression, we're going to talk about how to shape a blade, how to sharpen a blade once you have um, your, your bevel angle set, everything you need to know for how to use this setup. All right, so to get started, I have our, our Stealth Serac knife here. Now this knife is dull, and I'm gonna so we're gonna go through the whole sharpening process, but let me just show you how dull this knife is so you can see how well this thing sharpens. So if you have a sharp knife with a sheet of paper, the weight of the knife should be able to slice through that paper fairly easily. So as you can see, this knife, which has been used a bunch, it's just not, it won't really cut through that paper very well at all, which tells me that we have a very dull knife to start with, which is a good thing. Um, the first thing you want to do when you are reshaping your bevel angle is you're going to sharpen one side to try and get a burr, and then you're going to flip it over, do the same number of um, strokes on the other side, and then you're going to alternate uh, sides with your knife and different grits of your knife, just to give you a sense of what we're going to do here. Uh, the thing I want to tell you though up front is that today I'm going to show you how to reshape your bevel angle. So if you have a knife and you're not sure what bevel angle you have on it or you want to put a different bevel angle on it, um, you're gonna, you need to reshape that bevel angle. But let's say you have, like, let's say I take this knife. Today I'm going to reshape the bevel angle. I'm going to go out on a hunt. I'm going to use the knife. I, uh, it gets dull. I need to come back and sharpen it. What I'm not going to do that second time is use a really a, a aggressive abrasive to get my sharpness back on this blade. The nice thing about reshaping it and knowing exactly what your bevel angle is, is when you need to resharpen it, you can use a really light touch to try and get that uh, bevel, that sharpness back to your knife. So, but what I'm going to show you today is like how to take any knife and get the bevel angle you want and, uh, and get a knife really sharp. Okay, So I just wanted to say that, that caveat right up front. First, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take this knife and I'm going to put it in the vise here and you want to kind of get the spine of the knife back up against, as far as you can, back, ag back up against this vise here. Try and get it, you know, roughly level. And I'm going to tighten it down with the wheel and really lock it in there. Okay, so now it's nice and tight. You see the knife isn't moving around. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, uh, this handy, dandy be handy dandy bevel angle guide to make sure we get our knife at the correct bevel angle. I have a number of abrasives uh, over here, and I'm going to talk to you real quick about those. So there are a bunch of abrasives that come with the, the Professional Precision Adjust system. There are, there are lots of reasons why you might want to use different uh, abrasives for your knife. Uh, depending on personal preference, depending on the kind of steel you're working with, lots of variables. So we use an S35 steel on this knife, which is a relatively hard steel, so I'm going to start with a fairly aggressive abrasive. So I'm going to start with a 320 abrasive to try and shape the bevel angle on this knife. And it's important when you're looking, when you're trying to set your bevel angle, that you actually have an abrasive here uh, on the unit. So you can set it down here, and then you can uh, make sure you get the right bevel angle. So I'm going to turn it on. I like a 20 degree bevel angle on my knives. I think that's a really nice balance between durability for your edge um, and, uh, and sharpness. And then you have this wheel on top here that you can rotate up or down to get to lower or increase your bevel angle. I'm going to get it right to 20 degrees. Perfect. So now that I've got uh, my, my uh, bevel angle um, guide here at the right, right setting, I'm going to pop it off. The other thing that's important is you want to have this thing all the way up against the rod here, all the way on the top to make sure you get an accurate measurement of 20 where you're at. Okay, so before I get started, let's talk about there are these, these little um, black rubber flanges on your rod here. And these things are great because they kind of help, they can help figure out the range of motion for um, 
uh, for your sharpening device here. And you want to make it so you don't want your you don't want to come off the knife. So you want to have it so I'm going to push this bottom one up just a little bit. So as I come down the abrasive, I get a nice nice long stroke there, but it's not going so far that it's coming off of the knife. Just a little bit further. That's and it's just a hair further. Perfect. And on the upper end, I'm going to go almost all the way to the top. So I'm getting a nice full range of motion on this thing. Perfect. Okay. So again, when you're setting your bevel angle, the whole goal is to sharpen one side until you get a burr on the other side of your knife. And if you're not familiar with what a burr is, you've heard about people talk about it, it's really not that complicated. Imagine, imagine a wave in the ocean that is just sort of cresting over. And what you're doing with one side of your knife is you're sharpening one side. And what that will do is push the material on the other side of the knife like a wave. And you can kind of feel the burr on the other side of that knife. And you want to feel a burr all the way down the cutting edge of your knife. So you don't want to feel it in just one spot on the tip or on the bottom. You want to feel it sort of consistently across um, the entire cutting surface of your knife. As soon as you get that burr, we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same number of uh, strokes to uh, um, sharpen the other side of the knife and then we'll go to another abrasive okay so I'm gonna count as I go along here how many up and down strokes how many times I go from the bottom to the tip of the knife and all the way back and after I do a couple I'm gonna check for see a burr if I don't find the burr I'm gonna keep going here we go Okay. Don't feel a burr quite yet, so I'm going to keep going. Ooh, feel just the slightest burr. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do one more time up and down this knife. And I should note, when you're, when you're uh, you know, sharpening your knife, you don't want to push down hard. Let the weight of the device be as much weight as you put on the knife. All you're doing is really guiding it over the knife. You don't want to be pushing down uh, as you're sharpening your knife. See what that does for us. Now, I can feel a burr, just a subtle burr on this side of this knife. So now I'm going to flip it over. There's a red button on the side here. It's a really handy feature of this device that I really like because you can just flip it over um, without having to take the knife out of the vise. And now we can sharpen the other side. And again, I'm going to try and use the exact same number of strokes, same time, same number of times up and down. Okay, so that's roughly the same number of uh, strokes on each side. I can, I can now feel the burr on the underside of the blade. So when you're using that aggra aggressive abrasive, when you sharpen one side well enough, you're going to push that burr back to the other side. I like to also get down here and just visually inspect the cutting surface, get some light on it, and make sure the reveal, sort of the space of that cutting surface, just looks consistent from the tip all the way down to the bottom of the cutting surface, which it does on this one. And I like to flip it over and just kind of inspect and make sure that it looks consistent more or less just with your naked eye from tip to tail. Sometimes 
uh, when I look at it, I'll realize that, you know, maybe the tip of the knife hasn't been sharpened as well as the, the bottom edge of the cutting surface. And so then I realize, well, I haven't done my job. Um, I need to go back and reshape the cutting surface of this knife. So it is important when you're shaping your blade to make sure that you are doing that step correctly because if you don't do it correctly, none of the other steps, when you go to a lighter grit, it's not going to be as effective in terms of getting just that really razor sharp professional uh, sharpened knife. So anyways, so I am done with this 320 grit. So let me take it off. So this is a good time to talk about grit progression here. So. Uh, what we've got here is we've got a 320 grit. There are a handful of other grits. Um, there's one more aggressive grit that comes with this system, but I've got a 600, an 800, a ceramic, and then a strop here. Now, if I really wanted to, like, there are reasons that you might want to go straight to a 600 uh, or even a 400 and then go to an 800 and a ceramic. Um, I don't I don't think any of that's really necessary. Um, you can get a really razor sharp knife by going from a 320 to an 800. It's gonna take a little bit more work with the 800, but uh, you can absolutely do it. If you wanted kind of a more of a polished edge to your knife, so that nice smooth sort of mirror polished sharpening edge, then you might wanna go just do all of the grits in your knife uh, or in your kit to really make sure you're getting a nice smooth mirror polished edge. I don't think that's necessary at all, just to be really clear about it. Um, so I'm gonna go straight from a 320, I'm gonna go straight to the 800 grit and I'm gonna use that as my next grit. I'm gonna use a few more, um, few more strokes enough I went from a six to a 600, but this is what I'm gonna do here today just to show you how it can work. Now I am anal, so I'm gonna recheck my bevel angle to make sure I'm still where I wanna be. Make sure that nothing moved. And we are still right where we need to be, so we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off. Turn it off. Um, now again, the thing you wanna make sure you're doing here, so the last, I sharpened the, so the last side of this knife that I sharpened was this side right here. So I'm rotating it over and starting with the, the side that uh, my burr is now on. And I'm gonna go up and down, same number of times, and I'm just, I'm really looking to, uh, for here, I'm just looking to make sure to get rid of that burr um, on this side. It doesn't take, a whole lot of work um, to, to get your knife sharp and the number of strokes you need to do it's going to be a, a function of the type of steel you're using personal preference etc but um, I kind of it's one of those deals where I kind of know it when I see it on a knife because I've done a, a fair number of these so here we go Okay, I'm gonna flip this over, do the other side. Again, I'm gonna just visually inspect the knife to see how it looks. And it looks really, really nice. All the way, 
you can kind of see the, the grittiness, I should say, or the toothiness of that cutting, that bevel angle. If you look from the bottom to the top there, and before when I used the 320 grit, you could see there's a lot of like striations um, in the knife, and I could kind of, um, and I could see a lot of those have been worked out now, which is exactly what you want. I'm just visually inspecting, it looks really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to a ceramic. So again, we went from 800, or excuse me, 320 to 800. Now we're gonna go to a ceramic, and then we're gonna strop, and then we'll be done here. Okay, there's about 50 strokes up and down on that side, and about 50 on this side. Okay, now this knife is probably very sharp right now, but um, I like to strop my knives. So I feel like uh, if you're not familiar with stropping, it just gives that little bit of extra sharpness to your blade. Um, and unlike these other uh, grits where I'm going up and down with the strop, you're just going to go down. You don't want to go up because the knife is going to catch into this leather strop here. And this strop, this is just, um, Vegetable tan leather with some green compound on it is all this is. If you're not used to stropping your knives, I'm a fan of it. Just light pressure. I'm going to go up and down. Just a great way to really get your knives from really sharp to really, really sharp. And I'm just going to go up and down twice. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over. Okay, so now we should be done sharpening this knife. We've gone through an aggressive grit to shape our bevel angle. We've honed it with a couple uh, different abrasives with an 800, a ceramic, and then we've got, we should have uh, gotten a scary sharp with our, um, with our strop. So now I'm gonna loosen this up here, pull this out of the clamp. Now for the moment of truth, where we actually test to see I'm gonna use a fresh piece of paper here, test to see if this thing is as sharp as it should be. I like, when I get done with my knives, I, again, this is another time to just kind of visually inspect your knife to look at the reveal on the bevel angle. You can kind of just twist it around so you get some light. See if it looks consistent across the, on both sides from bottom to top. See if anything stands out to you like, oh, you know, if, it's not uncommon sometimes for you to sharpen a knife, especially when you're shaping your blade angle and pull it out and maybe realize that like there's a piece of it that doesn't look you know, exactly the same as, as the rest of your bevel angle, that's okay. Um, put it back in the vise. You, know, you can go back and start from the beginning again. Um, the key when you're doing like an ab aggressive abrasive is less is more. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna be taking off more metal than you need to because you can't glue it back on once it's off your knife. But once your bevel angle is set, like I have it here, um, I don't have to use these aggressive abrasives anymore. So I'm not gonna use a 320 um, uh, a, a grit abrasive on this knife. Again, unless I, let's say I chip the cutting surface of this knife and I need to completely reshape the blade angle to, to get that, to work that chip out.
But for the most part, I should be able to use a ceramic or my 800 grit and get this thing razor sharp again when I need to sharpen it. Okay, so let's test it out and see how sharp it is. So you can see that was just like, that's just the weight of the knife. I'm not pushing down at all. It's just slicing right through that paper. Okay, so you can see that's like a, it's just I'm letting the knife literally just fall across that paper right now. So that knife is, uh, as you can see, is just like, I'm not even, again, I'm not even pushing at all. I'm just letting the knife like fall down on that paper. So that knife is scary sharp, certainly sharp enough um, for anything that you need to use it for. So I hope you found this useful. Again, this, pr this professional precision adjust system is just so simple to use. It's incredibly approachable. So if you want to learn how to sharpen knives or want to sharp, be able to sharpen your own knives, I highly recommend this setup uh, for your at-home knife sharpening system. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments uh, in this video below.